feelings. Are they our friends or our foes? <laughs> Hi, my name is Susie Porter, and I help women rewrite their lives so they can create their happily ever after with lots of great feelings. <laughs> feelings, oh my gosh. Feelings, nothing more than feelings. Trying to, I, <laughs> terrible song from another decade. But I think about feelings quite a lot. I do. For those of us who are HSPs, highly sensitive people, we have to think about feelings because we feel so much. And even for those of you who aren't technically HSPs, feelings are still a huge part of being a human being. It's the good news and the bad news, right? <laughs> no matter where you fit on the scale of emotionality, as long as you are a human being, feelings are part of this life we live. I feel like I feel like feelings are the best part, really, and the worst part. When we feel good, our feelings literally create chemicals in our mind, uh, dopamine, serotonin, all the good chemicals, all the happy chemicals make us feel. They literally make us feel optimistic. They, they make us feel more strong and ha that happy energy. And when we, when we feel optimistic and happy and, and safe, then it's easy to enjoy and appreciate life. Things just don't bother us. But when we feel angry, triggered, pissed off, depressed, sad, hurt, it can feel, it can be impossible to summon any kind of positive emotion. So we humans do all kinds of things to numb our feelings. Uh, binge watch net, Netflix, drink, get high, go shopping, have sex, anything, anything that will just get us out of our heads and into a place that feels better. Abraham Hicks, one of my favorite funny spiritual teachers, says that everything that we do in life is in order to feel better. We think we want to be thin. We think we want to be rich. We think we want to get married. We think, but all of it, the motivation is we just want to feel better. And Dr. Joe Dispenza, who's a brilliant um, teacher, has this, this teaching that he teaches a lot that when you have a clear intention coupled with an elevated emotion, you can change your life. And I've been uh, doing his work for a couple of years now. And sometimes I'm like, yeah, I just can't get an elevated emotion. I just can't. Like I understand that idea, right? A clear intention and an elevated emotion. But for myself, when sometimes when I want something really bad, like even if what I want is an elevated emotion, I can't just snap my fingers and feel happy. I can't just shift, right? And sometimes wanting it, even that wanting can turn into desperation and then it's harder to get it. Like Buddha says, all our pain comes from attachment. You know, I, I live in Los Angeles and I moved out here to be a professional actress and statistics are like one or two percent of people in the Screen Actors Guild who, and that's even actors who get into the Screen Actors Guild make it. So I understand wanting that national commercial, wanting that break into show business. It's a desperation. And so many people like um, Shirley Jones, like they just happen to be in New York and just happen to meet Rogers and Hammerstein and just happen like sometimes when you want it so bad, you literally push it away. It's called resistance. And the path of least resistance means, it means that like Bruce Lee says, right? Be like water, water just flows and water is strong, right? Water can erode uh, mountains. Look at all the damage it's done here this year in uh, California. Water, just go with the flow. It's extremely powerful. You know, go to Niagara Falls. <laughs> The power is going with the flow. The struggle is when we try to swim upstream. I don't want to be no salmon, right? You know what happens after they swim upstream and spawn and do all that stuff? Then they die. <laughs> Whew. So no thanks. I would like to live a nice long life of going with the flow. Okay, so to get back to my topic about feelings, how can we feel better? And can we, like, can we control or even influence our, our emotional state? For many years, I struggled with depression and I 
I didn't know how to beat it. I, I literally felt powerless over it for weeks or months. I couldn't, I couldn't snap out of it. I couldn't, and I, and I have all these tools and I couldn't, I couldn't cheer myself up. I couldn't even shift my mood. For me, emotions have been very, very powerful and important in my life for better or for worse. My emotions have actually controlled me much more in the past than today, thank God. <laughs> So what did I do to develop this emotional maturity? Like Marian Williamson calls it, the musculature of managing my emotions. And I love what Mr. Rogers says about feelings. If they're mentionable, they're manageable. You know, I don't think people gave Mr. Rogers the credit that he deserved. There is profound wisdom in that. If they're mentionable, they're manageable. Holding in our feelings, denying them, medicating them, suppressing them. It might give temporarily relief and feel better in the moment, but it's never, it can't be a temp, it can't be a permanent solution, right? I mean, I get it. I get it. I'll be the very first person to admit that there are times when feeling my feelings is the absolute hardest thing on earth. I understand that very well. I understand the impulse to run and hide or to numb out. I'm not even going to say there's anything wrong with that because I've done it a million times. We all do, right? It's common. Why do you think there's so many drug addicts and alcoholics and shopaholics and people are in debt, you know, gambleaholics? Because when you first start doing those things, it feels good. And we all just want to feel good, right? We want to feel better. We don't want to feel bad. But I want to suggest to you that while feelings are powerful and emotions can be devastating, we do actually have power and influence to manage our feelings. And I want to say, and I never used to believe this, but I'm getting more and more convinced that it actually begins with our thoughts, that our thoughts create our brain chemistry and influence and create our feelings. So there's so many tools and techniques that can help, but I want to share one simple one right here, right now. For if you ever find yourself spinning out of control or dealing with any feeling that makes you just want to go get drunk, <laughs> you can go to get drunk. I'm not going to say there's anything wrong with that. But if you're not near a liquor store, <laughs> here's what you can do instead. Uh, find a place where you can just be still. If you're in the car, just pull over, right? And just be still and get grounded in your senses, right? What do you see? Say, I see a field, I see a sky, uh, a billboard. And what does your chair feel like? Well, this chair feels kind of hard. The blanket feels kind of soft. What do you hear? Well, I, I hear the traffic or I hear crows. And what do you smell? I smell like air freshener or whatever. Notice your breathing then and notice your body. Now, here's the miraculous part, right? As you feel yourself start to calm down and start to be present in this moment, right here, right now, you're not running away. Give yourself permission to feel all your feelings. And I know this can be super uncomfortable. The last time I did this, I sat in that chair right over there and I just said, God, will you sit with me? Because this is unbearable. So if you're at home and you have a cat or a dog or whatever gives you comfort, have that with you and tell yourself, I am safe to feel my feelings. I am safe to feel my emotions. Emotions are just sensations in my nervous system. That's all they are. They're not going to kill me. I am safe to feel my feelings. Think of emotions like wind, right? And your body is like a flute. Just let the wind blow through you. It will come in one end of the flute and go out the other end of the flute. But if you try to suppress it, it will get stuck. And that's the problem, right? When we try to block, deny, or suppress our feelings. It can't work. It's not healthy. Remind yourself that contrary to all the bullshit out there in our society, there's no such thing as a bad or wrong feeling. It's just a feeling, right? We have a brain a heart and a very busy nervous system. 
which is reacting to an extremely triggered, crazy, insane world right now. If you feel crazy, that's a sure sign that you're sane. <laughs> the world is super crazy right now. So today, take good care of your emotions. Give yourself the gift of time and space. Honor the emotions that you're feeling. Let them, allow them to be. Let them come in and through you and then let them leave. The very best poem, I remember um, a time I was feeling really, really down. I thought of this poem and then my friend shared this poem with me. It's just the best, I think by one of the greatest poets ever, Rumi. And so I wanna share it with you. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary aware awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they're a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice. Meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. Mm, thank you, Rumi, for that amazing inspired poem. And thank you for being a human being on this earth, sharing this life with me. Let yourself feel today and be curious. What is this here to teach me? It's cleaning your house. It's opening up space. Take good care. God bless you. I wish you all the, all the freedom and liberation of feeling all your feelings. Take care.